So today we're going to answer what do you do if you have business and personal transactions commingled in a single account? And the first thing I would say is if you haven't already, go ahead and open up a business bank account in your business's name. At a bare minimum, open up a personal account that is meant specifically for business transactions. That's the base, bare minimum actions you should take. And just trust me, it's going to make your life um, much, much easier if you're going to be doing your own bookkeeping. So let's assume you have... You're going this week to set up a dedicated account for business transactions, both checking and credit cards. Um, but that still leaves us, well, what do we do about the past transactions that were in the same accounts? Should we go and set up a feed for your personal bank account or personal credit card and stream it all in? My recommendation is no, don't set up a feed and go and bring in all that past data. What I recommend you do is go and log into your personal account or your um, checking account or credit card and download the past transactions. So what I've done here is I've taken an example spreadsheet. Let's say you go back to the first of the year or however long between your conversion date to now. Um, you are going to want to download your personal transactions and what I recommend you do, so here's a whole list, is go ahead and highlight the transactions that you know are business. So um, if, if it's predominantly personal account with a few business mixed in, or um, I just go highlight the business. And uh, whatever you do, you need to separate them, right? And so just for this example, I've strained out four transactions that in this example, our business transaction, so all the rest are personal. And what I've done is I've taken the date row and I've chosen the other four rows and then I've gone and copied them, gone to another sheet and I've pasted it. So here you see the pasted transactions. And so what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna be importing this these transactions into zero via CSV file. So if you haven't already, go check out the CSV import video. Um, it's going to give you a lot more details on formatting and how to get it into zero. So for right now, we'll suffice to say we've got these, we've strained them out, and but without going into too much theory, every time you have a transaction there's an equal and opposite um, transaction that's happening. And what I mean is, let's say this was uh, shipping supplies and this is an expense for your business. Well, not only was it an expense of 848.81, but since it hit your personal account, that means it was also a personal contribution. That means you paid out of your own personal funds for this business transaction. So. What happens is there's really two transactions going on, right? There's the expense for the business, but also there's the contribution for you, the owner. So what we're going to end up doing is going to this third tab. And what I'm going to recommend you do is go ahead and copy the string of dates, however long the dates are. If you have four transactions or 40 or 400, just copy the dates over. Then... What I'm going to recommend you do is put your name, so owner, owner Smith, right? And then click this little button at the bottom right corner, drag. We're going to leave you the owner's name in all four transactions. And then we're going to do a little bit of an Excel trick. So I'm going to type in negative one, and I'm going to drag that all the way down and put negative one in all these columns. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this, the, the expenses, that string of data. And then I'm going to right click and do this paste special. And when I do that, I'm going to choose an operation and choose to multiply. 
And what happens is it takes these digits and it multiplies them by the existing number. So essentially what I've done is I've turned negative 848 to a positive 848. And so how that's going to work, what that is doing is it's created an equal and opposite transaction. So when you spent 848 for the business, you contributed 848 to the business from your owners, from the owner's funds. And likewise, when you took um, money going out, money coming in is equal and opposite. So this is what it's going to look like to record your transactions. You strain them out, then duplicate the dates, put your name in, and then uh, multiply it by negative 1 to switch the from positive to negative or negative to positive. So now that we've done that, we are ready to go ahead and import this. If you've created multiple sheets like I have, Go ahead and delete those extra sheets and leave it with just the one. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop. And once I do, I'm going to come over to zero and we're ready to import. And so the question is going to be, where should we import it? Does it go in the checking or does it go in the credit card or the PayPal? It doesn't really go in any of those. So what I recommend you do is go to accounts at the top, then to bank accounts. And let's click this Add Bank Account button. Under the account name, we're going to put in Personal Contributions as the account name. And under the account number, you can just put all zeros. And if it forces you to enter a bank name, just put um, Owner Contributions something like that and it's not going to recognize the name plug this in so it can search a feed for us we obviously don't want or need a feed so we'll click save and once we do we'll have this personal contributions column what I'd recommend doing is don't put this on the dashboard take it off of the dashboard and then you just just like you learn in the CSV import video you go ahead and you import a statement you browse, you find the CSV, and then you import it. And then you're going to map it just like the other date, reference, amount, and save it. And what should happen here is if you've done everything correctly, you should have a zero statement balance. This should zero out. The statement balance, you don't want anything in personal contributions, any balance, because there should be equal and opposite, which will zero this account out. So for the expenses, plug the expenses and the, the sales to whatever account they belong in. Um, and when it comes to owner, so let's go to the cash coding screen. When it comes to these, you, let's go ahead and sort by, click the reference column to sort by owner Smith and whatever your name is of course for the ones where you receive money you see on the right hand side these received i would plug these as a kind of a tip i would plug these as contributions owner contributions and when there was money that was spent under your name i would go ahead and call these distributions so Money going out from the business to you is a distribution. Money coming into the business from you is a contribution. Um, so in a nutshell, that's a, probably the simplest way. There's other ways to do it. Um, they're more complex. They require more accounting, um, not theory, knowledge. So this is probably the simplest way to do it and uh, how I'd recommend you um, to do it moving forward.